Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to turn your 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime into a home generator. We're gonna use this today. So here we go. That is right, that is what we're gonna to do today. But before we get into it, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, this is not an ideal solution. This will work, I've done it before in other vehicles, but basically we're gonna take that inverter that I showed you, we're gonna connect that to the 12 volt battery inside my Toyota RAV4 Prime. The inverter will take that 12 volt battery power and convert it to 110 volt AC that I can use in my house or use on devices, whatever I wanna do with it. But it is definitely not an efficient way to do it. The best way to go about it would be to use an inverter like this and tap directly into the battery pack in this Toyota RAV4 Prime. This is where people usually kind of freak out and say, hey, Jim, you're doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. Yeah, that's kind of true. But I've done it multiple times already and it does work. I did this with my Tesla Model X. I've done it with multiple RAV4 EVs or off-grid inverter. It takes high voltage DC from a battery pack or solar panels and converts that to 240 AC. And this guy powers my entire house. This one is 10 kilowatts. They're very hard to find and they're very big. But in order to do this right and actually use the Toyota RAV4 Prime as a really serious generator for your house, you would need to find a smaller version of this so far, I've been unsuccessful, so if you guys do see one out there, let me know because I would love to play around with one of those. The late Jack Ricard used to sell them on his EVTV website, and I just never bought one, unfortunately, but what you need basically is a 60 hertz DC to AC off-grid inverter. If you could find one of those, then you could tap any EV or plug-in hybrid battery pack that's within the voltage range that the inverter can handle. In this case, it's perfect for Tesla batteries. This one's good up to 600 volts DC, which is very common for a lot of solar inverters. So as long as you could find one that's off grid, it would be perfect. And you could sit that right in the back of the car, tap into the HV lines, and you could have power for days. So that method is definitely the best way to go, but unfortunately, I can't do that today because I can't find one of those inverters. But this should be second best, and we're gonna see how it works. All right, we're gonna start by removing the liner here. We gotta remove the floor and get to the battery in the battery compartment right over there. All right, and right here is the 12 volt battery in this vehicle. Very conveniently placed right here in the corner for us. All right, we're getting a little closer, but before we get too much more into this, I wanna reiterate that, again, this isn't the best way to go about this if you're gonna do this regularly. And my reason for saying that is that we're always gonna be limited by the onboard DC to DC converter that's inside this vehicle. Just in case you haven't watched my last video that I put out about the all the charging details about electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids and stuff, you should definitely go back and watch that because I talk about a lot of the basics and, and the components that are in these vehicles. But all EVs and plug-in hybrids, they're gonna have a DC to DC converter. And what that is doing is taking the high voltage DC power from the main traction battery, the large battery pack that propels the car, and it steps that down to 12 volts to recharge the 12 volt battery pack that the car also has. And every car still needs a 12 volt battery to power your climate controls, radio, lights, all that kind of stuff. So that's a quick rundown of the components. But what that means is this method can only be as good as the onboard DC to DC converter. I suspect it's only gonna be around one kilowatt, uh, maybe 1.5, it'd be nice if it was two. Uh, I'm sure it won't be more than that. So that's gonna be a big limitation for this. You're not gonna be able to power your house with this method. The DC to AC inverter that I showed you at the opening of this video is a Harbor Freight Special. It looks pretty solid, looks pretty decent, and it definitely wasn't cheap, it was 500 bucks, but that is a 5,000 watt unit. So that's a, so five kilowatts. We're not gonna be able to use that full capacity from that inverter, no way, like we're not even close. But I wanted to buy a larger one so I could try to max out the car's output just to see how many kilowatts this DC to DC converter will put out in this car. Just pretty much all out of curiosity because I'm probably gonna return the inverter. I'm not gonna keep this whole setup. This is not something I'm gonna do long-term. If I was gonna do this long-term, like I said earlier, I would have to find a high voltage off-grid 
DC to AC inverter. That would be the only way to do it uh, and do it reliably. I've already found a way that I could tap into the battery pack whenever the time comes, and that would just be near unlimited power. Of course, everything has limits, but it would be a lot if you could find a 10 kilowatt off-grid inverter that could handle the high voltage from the battery pack, you could do 10 kilowatts out of this. I mean, you have to think of, if you floor your car, how much power is coming out of your battery pack, that is gonna be way more power coming out than it is to power your house. We're talking 40 amps to power the house at 10 kilowatts. EVs, and I'm sure this car as well, see 250 watts just like that so you're not going to damage anything it wouldn't hurt the car it wouldn't hurt the house but ideally we would do this again someday if we could find a whole house off-grid inverter that would be amazing but for now part of the reason i'm doing this is just tinkering testing and i wanted to see what the dc to dc converter could really put out so with that said i think i'm to the point where i can start doing some testing so i'm going to get the inverter connected I've got my meter so I can get that in place so I can do some current testing. So once we know that current measurement, I can test the battery pack voltage and we can do a simple calculation and figure out how many kilowatts are coming out of it. So let's continue. All right, so I got everything connected. Again, I wouldn't copy this exact method. This is more of kind of a trial and error just to see if it works, which I'm pretty sure it will. But here we go. I've got this connected to the gr chassis ground that's right there. I've got the positive connected directly to the battery, right at the terminal. These are two gauge EV wires. I think they're capable of up to like 250 amps. So they're, they're pretty heavy duty, really finely stranded. Then I have a big fuse right here, and this is a 250 amp fuse. This is even a little undersized for what this 5,000 watt inverter could do, but we're not gonna push it. We're not gonna be going quite that high with this test anyway. I have my clamp meter on the wire that goes to the DC to DC converter. I have a second meter here so I can watch the voltage on the 12 volt battery pack. And then I have a space heater here connected to the inverter. And this is a 1500 watt space heater. So this space heater alone might max out the DC to DC converter. Uh, I'm not sure. So we'll try it out right now. And hopefully we can find out a number and see what this DC to DC converter can really do. All right, so I just entered some numbers into my calculator. And with this off, with the inverter off, the power that we have going into the DC to DC converter is 1200 watts. So that's pretty good. The traction battery voltage is 387 and we're only getting 3.1 amps going to the DC to DC right now. So with just the car, I have the air conditioning going, it looks like the DC to DC converter is consuming 1200 watts. It's actually higher than I thought. So that gives us a baseline at least. So now I'll flip this thing on and see how high it jumps up. All right, so that's plugged in. Let's turn this on. That is on. Oh, wow, that just ju jumped up to 17 amps. So let's do a calculation real quick. Wow, 6,600 watts. So the battery voltage, the 12 volt battery voltage dropped, which was expected. It went from about 14.5 volts at idle. Now it's at 13.98 volts. So it dropped a half a volt, but it's not dropping any further than that, which means this DC to DC converter is keeping up with a lot of power. Yeah, 6,600 watts going into the DC to DC converter. That is way higher than I thought. The power gauge here on the side of the inverter is very basic, doesn't even show a number, just shows a gauge. And it looks like only the bottom light right there is illuminated a little bit on that second light. Yeah, so maybe a thousand watts going through this inverter. All right, I'm gonna give this inverter a little bit more of a challenge. This is uh, gonna be a little crazy. This is something that most electricians would tell you never to do, but I know what I'm doing. Uh, I'll show you guys what I have set up over here. All right, over here, I've got a power cord that I'm gonna plug into the inverter inside the car. And if you follow the end of that power cord, is plugged into the wall right there. So what I'm going to be doing is backfeeding power into this circuit here in my house. I do have this breaker off. This is the breaker that the power will be coming into. So it's not going to feed into the rest of the house. It's not going to feed to the grid or anything. As far as anything connected, it is not going to know the difference whatsoever if the power is coming from my car or the grid. 
And for things connected to it, I have this motor. That's obviously off right now. That motor is connected to that circuit. I have this space heater that I was just using over there at the car. And I've got a heavy duty halogen light. So we will use this stuff and see how much power that I can get out of the car before the 12 volt battery starts dropping. All right, so here's the end of the plug. The instantaneous power, because right now the heater is on. So the power that it first delivers is pretty, it jumps up a little bit. It jumped up to about 2000 watts. We'll see what my amperage is. So 17.6 amps right now, going to the DC to DC converter. So it's just a half amp higher than what it was. Let's turn something else on. I'll turn on the halogen light first. Well, that didn't affect much at all. <laughs> still at the same amperage so the halogen light must not draw a whole lot of power I guess now I'll turn on the motor and see what happens I'm getting a low battery warning so the battery the 12 volt battery has dropped to 11.3 oh wow it's climbing and that's spinning so battery voltage is climbing back up it's at 11.67 right now Current still seems the same. Current is still 16 amps. Wow, so it is taking it so far. Battery cables really aren't hot at all. They're not even warm. And the 12 volt battery is holding at 11.6 volts. So I honestly don't really know what this means because the 6200 watts going into the DC to DC converter is a lot higher than I thought it was gonna be. But I will measure the power coming out of the DC to DC converter now and see what the power coming out is. So we have 82 amps coming out of the DCD DC converter going into the 12 volt battery. So let's do some calculations on that. Wow, it's up to 113. 113 amps, it's 1300 watts. All right, so that makes sense. I thought it would be a little higher, but we're getting 1300 watts right now out of the DCD DC converter. These battery cables are starting to get a little bit warm. I should have larger than two gauge for this test. All right, so it looks like if you build this appropriately with fatter cables, this is probably a 1500 watt DC to DC converter. And right now I have a lot, I have quite a bit of stuff running. So I'm using quite a bit of power right now. On the side, this rudimentary gauge they have on this inverter is at three blips, three lights. Five lights is 2500 watts, so makes sense. All right, it's still going right now, but I think that kind of proves the test that in a pinch you can get one of these inverters connected to your 12 volt battery and the DC to DC converter is gonna have a high enough output to power a few things. I'm using somewhere around 2000 watts, maybe a little bit less, but I'll take the camera over here and I'll show you guys what I have going on. I have the light right down there. I've got that little space heater and I've got this going full blast. Just crank it along. So in a pinch, if there's a power outage, you could use one of these and power the necessary things in your house. Definitely build it with thick enough cables here because that is a lot of power coming through there right now. Also definitely use a fuse, but it looks like my 12 volt battery voltage is holding steady right around 11 and a half volts, which is low. I wonder if I have any warnings on the dash. Let's go check it out. Oh, and obviously the car is running. You would. 100% want the car to be running in order to do this. Otherwise, you would drain that 12 volt battery just like that. Yeah, no error messages in the dash. So that's happy. Yeah, so I would call that a successful test. So if you ever want to do this, now you know it's possible. With an off-grid inverter, man, that would be sweet. You could take power anywhere, similar to what I've done with my T-Rex trailers, and then combine that with the use of the charge hold feature, where instead of just depleting the hybrid battery that's in here, you could recharge it using the gasoline. Oh uh, man, you could go out to the woods, you could build a house, you could do anything with all that power. So pretty cool stuff. I love this technology. Subscribe, like, and share if you're into this kind of stuff too because these are the kind of projects I live for and I, I love doing stuff like this. But I think that's it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.